Okay, so uh, on Friday we were talking about um, aircraft engines. Let me just adjust the room, zoom here. Okay, uh, so for any type of propulsive device used for aircraft, uh, the thrust is generated based on Newton's laws of physics. Uh, so you can view the operation of an aircraft engine uh, uh, schematically as you see here. Uh, so, we also call these engines air breathing engines, and the reason for that is you use uh, the engine takes air in and then it ejects air out uh, by adding some velocity to that. So, this increase in velocity of the exiting air causes uh, the thrust force, so that's where the thrust force comes from. Uh, but if you look at the physics, uh, the exiting air has some kinetic energy, okay? So during this process, engine adds energy to the air, and this air is totally goes into atmosphere, and we can't really make use of that energy. So that energy is dissipated into atmosphere. That's a waste for us. Uh, so if you want to see how much of that uh, energy is lost, you can just use some equations. So this is what we did on Friday. Um, so let's see. Uh, the thrust force created is given by this relation, so it depends on uh, the amount of air that flows through the engine and also the uh, velocity increase of the air. Okay, so if you, uh, so you need to make both of these quantities large. If you want a large thrust force, you need to take more air in and also you need to give air a larger acceleration. So this is what this equation tells us. Uh, but if you in addition to this, if you want to quantify the amount of energy wasted in the atmosphere, then uh, you need to look at the kinetic energy of the air leaving the engine. And so uh, this is the power, actually, lost due to the kinetic energy um, added to the air. So this, must, this much uh, power is lost where you get this much thrust force. <coughs> So if you look at, um, so these are the two quantities uh, involved in thrust generation. Uh, so if you look at how they affect the thrust generated <coughs> and the power wasted, you can easily see that as you increase uh, the amount of air flowing through the engine while decreasing the, the velocity increase, uh, this leads to the case where you have a smaller amount of power wasted into atmosphere. Okay, so here n is um, a scaling factor. So if this, this is an original engine, suppose that you have, you pick up an engine and you modify this engine by increasing m dot and reducing uh, the speed increase, it turns out that if you do this by a factor of n, then uh, the amount of power wasted is uh, reduced by that same factor. Okay, so ideally you want to make this N number as large as possible if you want to reduce the uh, wasted power. Uh, so two extreme cases to this example uh, can be shown as follows. Uh, so in one case you have a small M dot but a large uh, air, uh, speed increase. So this corresponds to this case where you have a, <coughs> a jet engine used to create a vertical, uh, vertical thrust, as you see here. And the other case is the helicopter, and helicopter corresponds to this case, where you have an, a very large number. Uh, <coughs> okay, so this is where we stopped on Friday, and if you remember, I also showed you the Boeing 737 aircraft as an example, uh, <coughs> where over the years they modified the engine to make it more uh, power efficient, and they did that by simply increasing the the inlet diameter of the engine. Because if you increase the inlet diameter, more air can flow through that area. So, <coughs> okay. So let's. Uh, so what you see here is just a summary of our last week's lecture. So for an ideal engine, where by ideal I mean no uh, energy or no power is wasted, uh, the jet velocity should converge, 
the velocity of the aircraft be infinity and m dot should converge infinity. Uh, that means I'm just saying that the n you here should converge to infinity. That's what I mean there. Helicopters come close to doing that by getting in a very high flow rate through a very large disk area, while jet aircraft that can take off vertically, such as Harrier and F-35, does the opposite. Uh, they take in much smaller amount of air compared to helicopter, but give that air a very large acceleration. As a result, they can generate sufficient force to balance the weight, but they waste a lot of energy for doing that. Okay, so that was uh, our last week's summary. Um, so the efficiency of a power a propulsion system depends on that. Okay, so uh, in this example, um, uh, you have a propulsion system here that creates a force in the vertical direction, and you have another one, and um, they have different efficiencies. And to quantify this efficiency, we can just refer to uh, the efficiency definition from. Uh, from my lecture notes here. Okay, so let me just take this part for now. So this is how efficiency is always defined, right? It's defined as the useful power uh, versus the total power generated. Okay, so you create a certain amount of power, but only some part of that power, power is useful and the other part is wasted. And how much of that is useful depend, uh, defines your efficiency. If all of the power generated is useful, then you have 100% efficiency. But if you have only 10% of that as useful power, then you will have that much efficiency. Um, okay, so let, uh, to, in case of aircraft engines, let's uh, define the efficiency. Okay, so before that, let's take a look at the definition of power. So let's remember that. Uh, so let me go to the Wikipedia for that. Okay, so I think this part is sufficient for us. Okay, so in physics, power is defined as follows. It's the rate of doing work. It's also equivalent to amount of energy consumed per unit time. Okay, so the, um, in a propulsion system, uh, the, the energy... <coughs> obtained by burning fuel um, uh, goes to, to um, so let me say it goes to two places I couldn't really find a better word for that the energy obtained by burning fuel goes to two places um, A part of that energy uh, goes to useful work by creating thrust force, and the rest is wasted in terms of kinetic energy of the uh, injected air work done or uh, let me add useful work done by the trust force is So 
So the work done by thrust force is the thrust force itself times uh, the distance, right? So if as the aircraft travels uh, a distance by uh, amount d, then the work done in that process is t times t times d, and the power associated with that is this is the rate of uh, doing work, and the power of the thrust force becomes t times uh, d t by dt, which is thrust times the speed of the aircraft. So this is the useful power. And the wasted power was found before, right? Uh, last week we showed that the wasted power was It was 1 over 2 times m dot times vj minus v infinity squared. Uh, so the So this is how we calculate the efficiency of an aircraft engine. Uh, the, use, the ratio of useful power to the total power. Uh, total power has two parts. This is the useful part. This is the wasted part. And the, the useful one is this one. Okay, so the ratio of these two defines the efficiency. Um, and we can obtain a simple expression for this if we just uh, acknowledge that uh, m times vj minus v infinity is equal to the thrust force, right? So if you just use this relation here, then you, you can write the efficiency as t v infinity divided by t v infinity plus uh, thrust times <coughs> 1 over 2 times vj minus v infinity. Um, and then you can cancel all these thrust terms and you're left with V infinity divided by V infinity or 1 over 2 V infinity my, uh, plus 1 over 2 Vj and then you can uh, find out that the efficiency of a propulsion system is 2 divided by 1 plus Vj divided by V infinity. Okay? Uh, so if you want to compare the efficiency of a helicopter and a jet uh, aircraft that can take off vertically, then uh, you need to find out the jet velocity and then using this relation you can find the efficiencies. Okay? Uh, so, for example, if Vj is the infinity, then uh, uh, well, this is an ideal case. You cannot really achieve this in reality. But if you could have such an engine that uh, the air doesn't accelerate at all, right? So, whatever the uh, the air does not have any kinetic energy added to it. In that case, the efficiency is equal to 1. Or if Vj is equal to 9 times V infinity, uh, so you add that much kinetic energy to, to the uh, air, then if you put in these numbers, you will see that uh, the propulsive efficiency for that aircraft will be 0 0.2, right, if I'm not mistaken. You can also write that as 20%. Okay? Uh, okay, so this is... Um, so as I said last week, uh, even the modern jet engines, modern engines used in uh, modern aircraft have very low efficiencies. 
so I can't really give you the exact number because these companies do not reveal this information. These are uh, um, sensitive information and they don't really share this information. But uh, it is known that the efficiencies are on the order of 20 percent, even for modern aircraft, maybe 30 percent at most, but it's not more than that. So still, uh, we waste a lot of energy to fly aircraft. Okay. Okay, so next I will talk about different types of engines. Uh, so all, all I showed so far is uh, coming for all aircraft engines. And in this course, I will be talking about two different types of engines. One is a pure jet engine, and the other is a propeller engine. Uh, so these have different characteristics in terms of aircraft performance, and these, these are important. Uh, but before I go to that, so I should um, talk about power. So, so far we've talked about thrust, right? So we have, so if you remember, the... Um, we talked about this curve, and I told you that this is a very important curve. This is the thrust required curve. And, uh, so power is uh, very related with thrust, and for certain things, power will be used. So for certain performance uh, calculations, we will be using thrust force, but for other uh, performance calculations, we will be using power. So before I talk about different types of engines, now let me uh, talk a little bit about power. So let me just clear this part a little bit. Okay, so the uh, thrust required in a steady level flight is equal to the drag force, right? Um, so let me just start from there. Thrust required is equal to the drag force. This is for steady. Level flight. And let me uh, remind you this relation from several lectures back. And we have this relation, this equation derived for the drag force. Okay, so we said there are two parts. This is a proportional with v squared, and this is inversely proportional with v squared. So this is in the end what you get. Um, and power required. is simply equal to the thrust required times uh, the speed. Okay, so that just comes from the definition of power. Uh, so this is uh, how we define power required, and we can still use this relation here, and we can modify this to obtain uh, the power required expression. Um, so you multiply, this is thrust required, you just multiply it with V infinity. Uh, but as you see, there's already V infinity term uh, in this expression. So let me just make this power required. And since you multiply this with um, V infinity, then that will... So you, we have V squared here, that should be V to the power 3. And in the second part, we have v squared term on denominator, and that part should be v. Right? You're just simply making it. So let me make one there. Uh, so this is power required expression, uh, coming from the thrust equation. 
So let me make the corrections here as well. This should be power required. And this is should be again. Okay. Um, so if you want to plot, you can use this relation. You can plot power required, just like uh, we did for trust required. But naturally, the curves will be different, right? If you so these are the curves for power uh, trust required, and if you are uh, curious about the power required curves, then I can just show you this. Let me. Oradaki projektörün e, aspect ratio'su ile buradaki ekran iki farklı. Dolayısıyla görüntü farklı. Ben burada ekranda bunu çok basık görüyorum mesela ama şu anda düzgün görünüyor herhalde şeyde ekranda. Um, so this is the trust required curve. Let me just squeeze the power... Uh, this is, I'm sorry, this is the power required curve. Let me squeeze the trust required curve onto the same page. I should make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the the minimum point. So this point is an important point for aircraft performance, right? At this point, the thrust required is minimum, and this corresponds to special uh, aerodynamic condition. And remember, we derived that condition before. Uh, but if you look at the power required curve, uh, the condition which minimizes thrust required doesn't really minimize power required, right? So we can see this from these figures. I try to align them correctly so that uh, the, the, the horizontal axes are aligned, right? So this is the 20 meter per second point common for both curves. And it's so 100 uh, meters per second. Uh, so the, the thrust required becomes minimum at this speed, which is close to 50 meters per second, whereas the power required is not minimum. However, it becomes minimum at a different point, right? The power required becomes minimum, minimum uh, at a different point. Um, So we can find it analytically as well. So just like how we found the minimum thrust required point, um, okay. So let me write that the speed at which uh, the required thrust force is minimum for aircraft performance we found before we found earlier that uh, TR becomes minimum when the CL to CD ratio is maximum Similarly, minimum power required point is important as well. And we can also find the aerodynamic condition for that point. So, um,
find the minimum power required and we can um, we can use uh, the following relation we take the derivative of power required with respect to the speed and I equate that to zero right so this is uh, one way of doing that <coughs> Or we can find the same result by using CL and CD coefficients. As follows. <coughs> uh, we start from here, power required is equal to trust required times the infinity. And remember the, the uh, relation we had for trust required from before. So let me quickly uh, draw that here. So this is equal to drag force, and that's equal to Q infinity times. CD. Um, weight is equal to lift, but that's equal to Q infinity times. We also have S here, right? S times CL. And if you combine the two, you can write just required as um, W over CL over CD. Then, if you combine these two, you can see that power required is equal to Okay, so let's see um, So I have this V pin term here, uh, so I need to get rid of that, and I can do that by using the the lift equation. Uh, then power required can be written as Uh, okay, so this is what we have for power required. Uh, so I collected all the other terms within the square root here. And if you look at these terms, these are all constant numbers, right? The, the flight is taking place at a constant level, so the air density doesn't change for that. Uh, wing surface area is constant, and uh, we assume the weight to be constant as well. So these are all constant terms, whereas we have this ratio here. Um, so from here we see that uh, the trust required becomes minimum when CL to CD ratio is maximum but for power required uh, this ratio is important right um, so let me just write that conclusion
to transcribe becomes minimum when CL or CD is maximum and power required becomes minimum when CL to the power 3 over 2 divided by CD is maximum Okay. Uh, so the power curve is important as well, and we will see later today that uh, for some type of aircraft we use the thrust curve for performance calculation, but for some other type of aircraft we use we, we prefer the power curve because because it becomes easier to uh, study the performance. Or also for certain purposes, uh, power required curve becomes uh, more useful as we will see later. Okay? Uh, so if you look at these curves, you will see the, the, the relation between them. So this is the thrust required. And power required is thrust required times the speed. For example, if you look at this uh, blue point, the blue point here is at 1000, right? 1000 meters. So if you multiply that with the speed, then that becomes uh, 10 to power 5, right? And this is what you have here. So you take this and multiply that with the speed, and you get this point. This is 1000 multiplied by 100, which is 10 to the power uh, 5. Uh, so this is how these two curves are related. Okay, so every point here, you take this point and multiply that with corresponding speed and obtain this point, and, and so on. You, that's how these two curves are related. Okay. Okay, I think we have covered all of this. I can just delete this. Okay, so let me now show you a graphical relation between the two. Let me just take the power required curve. Um, So let, let's take a look at a power required curve. So if you draw a line from origin to any point on the PR curve through a line from origin to any point on the PR curve so let me use red color to show that um, let's see okay so let this point be my point so this is a straight line going from origin to that point uh, 
and let me call this speed v1 and then this is going to be pr1 then tangent of the angle between the line and the horizontal axis is uh, so let me call this angle theta tangent theta is uh, this side divided by this side right so this is PR1 divided by V1 uh, but we know that PR1 is equal to TR1 times V1 divided by V1 and these v one cancel each other out and then you you are left with TR1 uh, so this there's such a relation between these two curves uh, so the tangent of you, the angle you see here is equal to the thrust required uh, for that speed okay So, uh, okay, so we can just use this. Okay, so here we see the thrust required and power required curves. And the thrust required becomes minimum at this special point, and at this point, this ratio is maximum. Okay? And the power required curve is this one, and it has a minimum as well, but the minimum occurs at a different uh, condition. And we just uh, found that the condition for power required to be minimum is that this ratio is maximum, which is the ratio of C out to the power 3 over 2 uh, to CD. And if this ratio is maximum, then the power required becomes minimum. And uh, so you see a red line here. The, what's special about this red line is um, line drawn from origin tangent to the PR uh, curve okay and this is theta So let me call this theta t for tangent. Since the line is tangent at this point, uh, this angle cannot get any smaller than this, right? So this is the minimum possible angle you will get. For every other point, the angle will be larger, right? So if you choose this point, you have a larger angle here. Or if you choose this point, you have a larger angle. And the minimum possible angle uh, is obtained when this line is tangent. And that minimum possible angle corresponds to the minimum possible thrust. Okay? So the, when this line becomes tangent to the power required point, uh, thrust required is minimum. Uh, so this point corresponds to the the minimum thrust required point here. Okay. Uh, so anyway, we'll be talking about these thrust and power curves uh, quite often in our future lectures. So let's give a break and continue after the break. Do you have any questions before the break? Okay, so let's give a 10 minutes break. <laughs>